What's going on everyone? Hope you're doing well. Eric here from Nomadic Fanatic. I, um, I'm not in Texas anymore. In fact, I should be wearing a jacket right now. A little chilly in Illinois. Yeah. Hey guys, I will be uploading this video with some Nomad internet, link below in the video description if you need some mobile unlimited internet where you're at. It has been a, a rough 30 days for me with losing jacks and a couple other issues going on in my life and uh, I just really wanted to be here with friends and family and I needed to do a couple things here at my shop. So I got Miranda plugged in. Um, I've got Tater Tot. Yeah, my smart car that I was uh, storing here. Tater Tot is at the shop getting work done because I am going to be making a change for the winter. Instead of bringing Black Betty in the trailer towing behind the RV, I'm gonna set up the trickle charger and keep Black Betty here in the heated shop here for the winter. And that way I can kind of trade off as I like. I was starting to think about the desert and the dust and the cold and that scary windy ride that I had in Texas where the jacket flew up over. Just, uh, just, just comfort wise, I think, that, you know, I think I'm just gonna store the bike. The shop, I may actually do a little bit of organizing here because this, this is tough, but the shop space here has central heat, which I've already replaced the filter on there. And I've told you guys over the summer that I have central air. The central air is for where the arcade's at. And that's that unit right there. What's that? that? That's our project today, that box there. I'll show you in just a minute. But yeah, here in the arcade room, uh, also have the temperature set to a really comfortable level in here. And uh, this is just kind of be my, my break room. It's about 48 degrees outside today and I'm gonna be working outside on the roof of the RV mostly so I can come back in and play some arcades, listen to some tunes. I gotta bring in all the Mickey stuff and CDs and camel stuff that I've collected that's underneath the bed of Miranda. I got a lot of projects. This is not gonna be like a sit down and relax week for me. This is going to be doing a bunch of projects and I'm really excited about it. But in case I change my mind, we'll just go day by day and work on these projects. This is not a sponsored video. Uh, I bought this with my own money. This is a relatively new product by King. You guys know I've, I've had really good success with this company. Uh, they are newly into the uh, cell booster category. This is a 5G ready. And the reason why I got this specifically, about 540 bucks is because I helped Dennis install this at Lollapalooza on his RV and we saw our speeds increase by 1000% after installing this. But I've already done these kind of videos on YouTube quite a few times. So we're not, this isn't gonna be an in-depth uh, installation, but um, hopefully we can get this installed here in a couple hours. We're gonna start up on the roof. All right, got it secured. One note about positioning for me, something that Dennis and I talked about. You do still have a choice of how high you want to put it. However, well, let me go up a little higher here. All right, where I have mine positioned, if I go up to the top of it, you can probably see that it's not the highest point. In fact, it sits about four inches lower than my air conditioner shrouds. Don't know if you can see that, okay? Um, I, I could put it up a little higher. Also, I could just loosen up these bolts and drop it down if I were in a questionable area that had low hanging branches and I didn't trust it. But either way, I'm gonna feel the first tap up there on my satellite dish satellite, and then I'm gonna hear it on the air conditioner shroud, and then I'll hear it back here before it hits this. But like I said, it will be easy to just drop that down, and I may even do a test later to see how well it does hooked right there. You know, does it really have to be as high as the RV? I don't know yet, but that's where we're gonna tighten and cinch this up right here. All right, then next step is getting the provided coax over to the fridge vent. Now I will point out, uh oh, cops got East Dalton police over there. I had to go back down to get my drill and Phillips and uh, they just busted the door uh, on the front of that house right there just busted it in with the battling ram there he's got it in his hand taking it back 
apparently they needed to serve a warrant or something and he was not cooperating. So I gotta break through the silicone here to take this off. All right, last screw coming up. Of course, I'll have to reseal all of this stuff here in a minute, but there we go. Like I said, this is the wire I want that goes down to the old booster. So I'll be able to just connect the new coax with this to uh, get it down there. Should be easy. Well, interestingly enough, it's a different end. This is a, a huge connector that goes on this one. It's much, much deeper. This is just a standard coax cable looking thing. So this is not compatible, the old, the old one, to stretch it down there anyway. So, I mean, you just change your plans as you go anyway, but yeah. All right, got all my outdoor coaxial run. Blatant ad for Modified Auto right here in my video. Not sponsored, but a great place if you're in the East Alton or St. Louis metro area to get car audio done, window tinting, remote starts, because it's getting cold, which I have some news about Tater Tot. They are working on a remote start for Tater Tot. That's right. <laughs> Currently, uh, wires going under here. I still got to zip it down with some cable ties underneath the solar panel. Runs underneath here, goes back, it's fed down underneath. I'm just gonna seal up the outdoor stuff and then we'll have to come back and silicone up all the screw holes that I put in to hold down the cable so it doesn't make noise in the wind and flap on the panels. And then we'll wrap up the exterior stuff and start working inside where it's nice and warm. Sound good, Tara? You hear me, Tara? All right. Awesome, that was super easy for me, but that is gonna be the hardest part of this entire project for anyone, whether it's an existing install or a brand new install. I know drilling holes in your roof is gonna be a big detour of why you wouldn't get this, but again, see how easy it is? Just take four screws out of your refrigerator vent and just pop it down, weave it through. You can drill a little hole in the compartment that's right next door to it, and that's how we're gonna run that wire through here to get power for the last bit of this project. AC power. However, this is an AC-DC converter, meaning the amplifier device is powered by DC. So technically you could, and obviously don't do what I do, blah, 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 but you could hire a professional to cut this line and fuse it and tap into any DC anywhere in your RV. Maybe you have a light, uh, like a little DC light inside under a cupboard or something. You don't have to use AC. It's just convenient for me because this basically runs on nothing and I have a lot of solar. So I'm just gonna plug it into an AC outlet nearby. Once that's installed, here's the other mini coaxial and the mini antenna that you wanna keep 20 feet away. So there's the antenna on the back of the RV. Da -da -da -da, the cord goes here. We're plugging in somewhere around right here. And then this is going to be somewhere up by the front of the RV, probably up by the lamp where the leg lamp is right here is where my internal will be. And then I just need to keep my Nomad internet device within, I don't know, about six feet of this to always work or have my cell phone nearby. And then possibly also, depending on how much extra I have, in the summertime when it's nice, I could pop this window open, bring this outside, set it somewhere for everyone else to sit around and get some really good cell phone service and internet. Yeah, just wanted to show you this, understanding that every RV is gonna be different, but here's where my fridge is at. So right behind it is where the fridge vent was. You can kind of see some daylight sticking through that hole right there where my finger's at. That's the top of the vent. And you can see I drilled a hole prior. This is cable from Dish Network that comes in. And this is the new cord that I just wove through by cutting the old one and then using black electrical tape with this one to connect the two so I could just pull it down and not have to worry about weaving it. This will go back. I have power right over here where my game systems are at. So that's where I'm going to be installing the new one. In fact, I think the old one that doesn't work is right there. <laughs> right there's the crummy one. So um, we'll get this one installed. Alrighty then, mostly installed. All the wires except power are hooked up right now. So to the right, we have the antenna coming from the outside. To the left there is the smaller antenna that goes through that hole. And then it goes behind this uh, wire hider right here, down there, over here. And then this is how much slack we have left over for the inside antenna. So it can be moved out around a little bit around here, or I could put some 3M tape there. It's crazy to think that I might be able to keep wires like this out in the open now. Because <laughs> so far, Tara doesn't have an appetite for chewing cords, right? Yeah, 
Jax didn't teach you how to chew cords. It's a good thing, right? You don't want to learn. It's not fun. No, it's not fun. We finished the roof stuff just in time. It's raining outside now. And this turns really, really muddy when it rains here at base, or base camp. This is, this is my shop. It's not base camp, it's shop. It's my shop space. But I gotta plug in the power cord here and make sure that we get the solid green light eventually. That's solid green right now. Make sure it's not in oscillating mode or anything like that. Like it just kind of tells you that you've hooked everything up. We're not getting any red flashing lights. So that means we're good to go. Awesome, we got it on the first try, but I'm gonna unplug it because I wanna test things. Let's test Nomad Internet here first, which this uses cellular signal. In my case, I have the blue plan, which is AT&T. So my booster is unplugged and off, which means that this device here that grabs cellular and turns it into internet is going to, right now, grab the nearest cell phone tower. So while that's uh, warming up and starting up with AT&T, let's go to the computer. All right, what, 70 inch TV? I wasn't looking at putting a 70 incher in the RV. Uh, let's go up to change this to Nomadic Fanatic, and that will be my uh, Nomad Internet, and then we'll open a new browser here, and we'll open up speedtest.net. Hasn't quite connected there. Give it a second. There we go. Okay. AT&T Internet. There we go. And Chicago, Illinois is our server. Let's go ahead and start this and get a baseline for what my speeds are without the booster on Nomad Internet. Usually I do pretty good, actually. It's there we go. Okay, <laughs> I was gonna say usually we do better than that without the booster. It's almost done. We're close to twenty. There it is. Uh, officially twenty point eight one. Remember that number for our download speeds. Now we're testing our upload speeds, and right around ten, but we'll call it. 9.87. Okay, without the booster. Let's plug the booster back in. Give that just a moment to warm up. All right, so essentially what is happening right now is this device right here, this Nomad Internet, is no longer going to connect to that nearest cell tower out there. This is now connecting to this. There's a communication between this and this. Then this goes up to the cellular booster amplifier up there that's green, which is actually going to the back antenna on the back ladder, which is going to the nearest cell tower over there. But before we do our speed test, did want to point out that we now have four out of five bars on there where we only had two. So we went from two bars to four bars. We have a stronger signal. All right, trying this again, AT&T Internet, finding Chicago, Illinois. Let's go ahead and go. And hopefully this is at least a little bit better. At least we had a better signal. I know that for sure. We had a better signal. It's okay. Ooh, there we go. Look at that. Ooh, I think we're going to hit 30. Ooh. Oh, my. Look at that. Oh, 29.89 on the download. Here we go with the upload. It's creeping up past 10 right now. Keep going. Keep going. There we go. All right, officially a 15.6. So 29.8 and 15.6. Let's go to the other tab there real quick. We started at a 20 and gained nine more megabits per second. We started at 9.8 on the upload and went to 15.56. So definitely much, much better speeds, but we also gained two bars of strength, of signal strength. And I put a lot of weight on the signal strength, being able to get much better connection to the tower in these remote places. I'm not remote right now, but yeah, that was good. It's not always the best test when you already have a pretty good signal strength. I mean, I'm right here in the city with really good internet and cell reach. But when we did the test at Lollapalooza on Dennis's rig, we both tested our iPhones right there. And I got on upload speed, I got 0 0.08 megabits per second. Absolutely nothing useless. With this booster, we both were in the 20 to 24 megabits per second, which will upload a, a one gigabyte video in about two hours. And that made all the difference. It, we literally went from 
not being able to do anything at Lollapalooza as far as work and uploading to literally being able to upload videos. So cellular boosters seem to be pretty good for a, a digital nomad that needs internet. It's not supposed to, but sometimes it gives you internet when you didn't have any internet before or cell cellular service to be able to make a phone call or something. So I'm just going to clean up everything in here and fix my wires and then I'm going to call this project done. We are boosted. All right, well, uh, changing of the seasons, I guess. We're obviously past Halloween, so we don't need this on there anymore. And I don't really have a Thanksgiving wreath. So I already had the Christmas tree up inside. Might as well put the Christmas wreath in the front of Miranda. I'll show you how I do that. A lot of people ask me every year uh, how I have lights and stuff like that. Well, I'll show you. I only get about a season out of these, but they cost, what, $5.44 at Walmart, these battery-operated LED lights. They come in a case and uh, AAA batteries. I use rechargeable batteries. It has a seal around the edge, so it is watertight. And uh, basically I'd zip tie it somewhere on the wreath or behind the motor compartment of the RV. And like I said, I, I think getting two months out of it's pretty good, but eventually water seeps in or bulbs go out or it gets too hot, something, and it just stops working. So that's what I use, 588 at Walmart in the Christmas section. I got some zip ties and I'm going to twist them through different parts of the wreath. I guess technically I could put orange lights on here and decorate it for Thanksgiving, but no, I'm going straight to Christmas. So I'll get this all set up and show you what it looks like on the front of Miranda. All right, and then I have three more zip ties that go through the grate right there to secure it firmly. Um, I'm not worried about cutting off any heat from the radiator because I mean, it's winter time, November and December. It's not really that big a deal of overheating. I keep an eye on my temperature. There's still lots of airflow going through here. So yeah, never had a problem before. I just put some uh, double-sided tape on the battery compartment here and then I find a spot like right there on that metal frame, pop it down. She's good. She ain't going anywhere. Let's uh, put some batteries in here. And then when it gets dark tonight, I will show you how this looks. All right, guys, it's getting dark and it's getting really chilly here, but I got tater tot back and I'm so excited about this. You smart car owners out there are gonna lose your mind right now because you've been told, we've all been told that you can't put a remote start on a smart car. Watch this, one button, lights flashed. <laughs> I can start my smart car with my phone anywhere in the country. I can fly to Florida, push a button on my phone, and start this car for whatever reason I want. Right now, I like having it so that I can get the seats preheated and the defroster going in the back and get the heat going inside, and then push button, start, stop it. Yes! Sean hooked me up at Modified Auto and Brian there. They're, they have one of the best technicians in the entire St. Louis area there and Modified Auto. They can do stuff that other shops say is impossible. Yeah, got that done. Ooh, let's check out the lights for the uh, wreath here. All right, there's my sequence there. You can, I'm tapping the button with my hand just to kind of see what different settings there are. I think I like the first one that was going first. There's kind of a fade. There's that solid. There's that, I actually like that one, so. Okay, so actually it looks like it's cycling through all the different ones, and, and that's okay too. But the cool thing about these, these lights is, let me see what time is it? It is 6.15 p.m. So this will run for eight hours every single day and then automatically stay off for 16 hours. So every night now at 6.15 p.m., these will automatically turn on. I don't know if I like the doing all the different variations right now. I may switch it back to the flashing lights, but that looks awesome. Yes, I am so ready for Christmas. Cool. <laughs> Cold out there though. I got the ceramic heater on for me and Tara. Does Tara like the heat? Yeah, does that feel good on your kitty, kitty back? Yeah, that's pretty good, huh? Um, gonna go have dinner with uh, Sean and Jill tonight. And this is just gonna be a really good week for me, but I also, during the daytime, you know, when my friends are at work, I'm gonna be doing projects on the RV. So um, I will see you here in a few days. Thanks for joining me guys. Tara and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.